Welcome! In this video tutorial we're going to show you how to go from a Cadence layout to a Sonnet EM simulation using the Cadence Virtuoso interface, viewing your response data from your EM simulation, viewing the resulting models created from the response data of your EM simulation, to creating a test bench schematic so that you can use your model and bring it back into running a Cadence simulation showing you how to go from your original layout to bringing that result back into Cadence. So the first thing I need to do is to load the Sonnet menu in the layout window. Select Launch Sonnet from the main menu, which loads the Sonnet menu. The next thing I will need to do is create the Sonnet EM view, which is basically a duplicate of your circuit that allows us to do the electromagnetic analysis while leaving your original design alone. Select Sonnet, Create Sonnet EM view, and the Create Sonnet EM View dialog box appears on your display. Okay, the first thing you want to do in this dialog box is to select a preset. Sonnet provides presets for common circuit elements, and the preset loads values in the interface that are common to analyze the selected type of part to cut down on your setup time. In this case, I'll select a center tapped inductor because that's what this circuit is. Okay, this also allows you to translate the whole cell view or part of the cell view. In this case, the whole cell view, which happens to be the default setting. I click on the OK button, and the layout is then translated into a Sonnet EM view, which can take a little bit of time based on the complexity of your circuit and your computer's processing capacity. Once a Sonnet EM view is created, a layout window of the Sonnet EM view appears, and as I mentioned before, it's identical to your original layout at this point. And the Sonnet Cadence Virtuoso interface also appears on your display. Now there are a number of setup tasks in the Cadence Virtuoso interface, and this window is set up that as you go from left to right and zigzag through the window, you'll follow a normal design flow. It kind of makes it easier to check off these tasks as you go. A lot of the settings, both the interface defaults and the values input from the preset, are already what we want, so there really is very little we need to do before running an analysis. An important thing to check before simulating is the cell size. The solver will snap all of your dimensions to the nearest cell. This circle defaulted to a 1x1 one one micron cell, which really is overkill, so we're going to use a 2x2 two two cell size. The resolution is coarser than the default, but provides enough accuracy for this circuit and will take less time in memory. When using version 15, the next thing I am going to do is change the default frequency range. I'd like to do a broadband sweep from 0.1 GHz to 25 GHz, and as you can see, the Include DC Point is already selected from the preset. Note that for version 16, there is no longer an Include DC Point checkbox. The preset enters a zero as the starting ABS frequency, as this causes a DC Point to be calculated automatically. So the next setup task that I'm going to do is to add pins to my circuit in order to convert them to Sonnet ports, which are necessary to run an analysis. I'm going to go in the layout window and select the layer that I want to add the pins to which is the metal 6 pin layer, which is also the layer that the metal of the circuit appears on. Then going back to the interface, I'm going to click on the Add Pins button. This opens the Create Shape Pin dialog box, which is a Cadence dialog box, but we allow you to access it from the interface to make things easier. You do want to display the terminal name, it just makes it clearer when you view your circuit, and you typically have to go in and change a few settings in here so that the labels appear correctly. I'm going to enter P1, P2, and P3 as my terminal names for the pins. And once I've got that all set up, I'm actually going to go into the circuit and add the pins. The labels that you enter for the names are going to be applied in the order in which you add the pins. And once that's complete, go back to the interface and you click on the ports button and the ports dialog box is opened. Notice that the cadence pin names have been converted to sonnet ports. And the last setup task that we're going to need to do is to edit the substrate file. The substrate file defines the stack up of the materials used in your analysis. It also contains the mapping from Cadence layers to Sonnet project layers. Clicking on the Edit Substrate File button opens a substrate file dialog box. Now, you can create a substrate file by using the GUI here and entering in all your values, but it's a fairly complicated process, so many times either a technology file is imported, or if you previously created a Sonnet substrate file, you can just load that in for subsequent designs, which is what we're going to do in this case. You click on the Load MATL button, a browse window appears, and you select the substrate file you wish to use. And as you can see, the substrate file setup dialog box is updated to indicate that there are now layers mapped from Cadence to Sonnet. You then click on the Materials button 
and the Materials Setup dialog box appears, and here's the list of materials that will be used in your analysis. We close those windows. Okay, so that completes the setup of your circuit and you're ready to run your analysis. To do so, you click on the Simulate button, which is going to launch your Sonnet EM analysis. And while the analysis is running, then you'll actually get updated information that appears in the lower left-hand corner of the Cadence Virtuoso interface. And there's also additional information which appears in the CIW. The amount of time the simulation takes is going to be dependent on your computer resources and the size of your circuit. In the case of this analysis, since we're creating models, the last status message to appear in the Cadence Virtuoso interface window will say that the inductor model is created. Now that the simulation is complete, we're going to take a look at the response data that you produced during your simulation. I click on the View Response button, which opens Sonnet's Response Viewer. If this is the first time it's been opened, the default plot displayed will be a DB of S11. I'm going to use the Response Viewer's Equation feature in order to plot the differential inductance on the left axis and the differential Q factor on the right axis. This shows you the plot of the differential inductance and the differential Q factor for the inductor. When you're done observing your data, select File Exit. Okay, the next thing we want to do is take a look at the broadband SPICE model that was created during the simulation. It's a lumped element model based on a rational polynomial fit. The SPICE extractor finds a rational polynomial which fits the S-parameter data, then the polynomial is used to generate an equivalent lumped circuit element in SPECTRE format. To view your broadband SPICE model, you select Models, Broadband SPICE, Show View from the main menu. When you view your model, a layout window, a schematic window, and a dialog box are opened. The dialog box allows you to identify the actual model file being referenced by the symbol view. The schematic window shows a schematic view of the model, and the layout window is the symbol view of your model, which in this case is a layout lookalike. You use the symbol view in your schematic so that your models can be used in a cadence simulation. Now normally your test bench schematics would contain multiple circuit elements, but for this tutorial we've created a test bench schematic that includes only the Sonnet model so that you can see the results in the Cadence simulation. When you open up the configuration view, the schematic of the test bench is opened and the hierarchy editor is open. Using a configuration view allows you to easily switch between the various models created by your Sonnet simulation. In this case, since we are using the broadband SPICE model, we want to select that from the list in the view to use. This means that the schematic is now going to access the broadband SPICE model created by your simulation. Once you do that, you're going to want to do a file save in the hierarchy editor. Then you want to go back to your schematic window and perform a check and save to make sure that the schematic is now referencing the correct model. Now you're ready to run a simulation on this test bench schematic. Normally, you would have to go through performing a setup in the Cadence simulation, but in order to save time in this tutorial, we actually created a state to load, which will set up your simulation. Once that state is loaded, we're going to click on the green Go button to run the simulation, and at the end of the simulation, Cadence plots the L and Q curves shown in this graph. Remember, these results are based on the broadband SPICE model generated by Sonnet. I've also included the L and Q curves shown earlier, which were based on the original S parameters from your Sonnet analysis. As you can see, the two graphs match well. This means that the broadband SPICE model is accurately representing the EM simulated results. Thanks for taking the time to watch this tutorial. Call or click to learn more about what Sonnet can do for your applications.